Our last video series was about the data structures. We looked at the most common data structures, their use cases, the pros and cons of each, and the different operations and the complexity of those operations on those data structures. In this video today, we will be kicking off a similar series for the authentication strategies. We'll be discussing everything you need to know about the authentication and the different authentication strategies. All right, so what is authentication? Authentication is the process of verifying someone's identity. A real world example for that would be when you board a plane, the airline worker checks your passport to verify your identity. So that is the airport worker authenticating you to either allow or reject you from boarding into the plane. If we talk about the computers, when you log into any website, you normally put your username and password, which is then checked by the website to ensure that you are who you claim to be. There are two things you should keep in mind. Authentication is not only for the persons and username and password is not the only way to authenticate. Some other examples are when you open a website in the browser, if the website uses HTTPS, then TLS is used to authenticate the server and to avoid loading a fake website into the user's device. Also, there might be a server to server communication on any website, in which case the server may need to authenticate the incoming request to avoid the malicious usage. All right, so how does the authentication work? On a high level, we have these factors which are used for authentication. So first of all, we have the normal username and password. Then we have the security codes or the pin codes. One example for that would be the pin code that you enter into the ATM to withdraw cash. Next, we have the hard tokens, which are the special authentication hardware devices, which are attached to authenticate the user. Then we have the soft tokens. In soft tokens, unlike the hard token, we don't have any special authentication device. We just verify the possession of some device which was used to set up the authentication. For example, you may receive an OTP on your mobile phone to be able to authenticate yourself. And finally, we have the biometric verification in which we use the biometric data to verify the user. For example, we might use iris, facial recognition, or the voice recognition, and so on. Now, if we look at these different authentication factors, we can categorize them into three different types. So the username and password and the security codes, they're relevant to something that the person knows. So we can say that this is a knowledge factor. In hard and soft tokens, we authenticate the user by verifying the possession of a hardware device. So this would be a possession factor. And in the biometrics, we test the inherent qualities of the person, iris, face, or voice. So this would be a qualities factor. All right, so this brings us to the next topic, multi-factor authentication and two-factor authentication. So first of all, we have multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is the type of authentication in which we rely on more than one factors to authenticate a user. So for example, if we pick up a username and password from the knowledge factor and soft tokens from the possession factor, and we say that for a user to authenticate, they must enter their username and password first, and they should also put the OTP which they receive on their mobile phone. So this would be an example of a multi-factor authentication. And because we are relying on more than one factor to authenticate a user, so we can say that multi-factor authentication is much more secure than single-factor authentication. One important thing to note here is that the factors you pick for authentication, they have to be different. So for example, if we pick up a username and password and security question or the security codes, it is still not true multi-factor authentication because we are still relying on the knowledge factor. The factors have to be different for it to be considered as a true multi-factor authentication. All right, so next we have two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is similar to multi-factor authentication. The only difference is that there are exactly two factors in two-factor authentication. In multi-factor authentication, we can have two, three, four, or any number of authentication factors. So next we have the difference between authentication and authorization. This comes up a lot in the interviews and the beginners often confuse between them. So first of all, we have authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity. So for example, if you are at a login screen and you enter your credentials, the application is going to identify you through your credentials. So this is authentication the process of verifying the identity. In case of the authentication failure, for example, if you put the wrong username or password, the response code from HTTP is going to be unauthorized, 401. Authorization is the process of checking the permission of the authenticated user. So for example, if you logged into a website already and now you're trying to perform some action, the application is going to check if you are allowed to perform this operation or not. 
So this is what the authorization is. Performing a check to see if the authenticated user can perform a specific action or not. In case of the authorization failure, the response code from HTTP is 403, forbidden. All right, so here is the list of common authentication strategies. In the future videos, we'll be going through each of these strategies and we'll be discussing what they are, how they're implemented, and the pros and cons, and so on. So stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one.